and then I met Lino and Cotton and Jean and Zach and all other interesting people and then I got interested in Crowley of course, you know, Zach was always on about Crowley and I walked in there, Lino and me, me went to Holland to take, pick up my books and I walked in there with the whole equinox including the blue one and I walked, put it on Zach there saying, oh, you know, his face was big, <laughs> never was with the whole Crowley. I bought it in the 70s in Holland, I couldn't even read the because I've never been taught English. <laughs> it's, only now, it's only now I start really reading, really getting into Kenneth Grant. I mean, I bought them in the 80s. I couldn't read them for the same reason. Now I, I go through one a week. I've got them all lined up. <laughs> Well, for those who don't who weren't there in the eighties, Zach, Zachary Cox, who's the editor of Aquarian Arrow, so and, 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 and yeah, a long-standing authority. That he was a very inspirational person to me. Yeah, he really was. What did you? In what? What qualities? Mm -hmm. What about him inspired you? His energy and his intellect. We just sparked off. He got the similar. I don't know how he is now, but He's Zach the same and love. me, He's the same you know, love. we just look. Like Zach and me never actually had one good conversation together. Really? No, they wouldn't have it. Jean, when Lionel was at work, Jean basically told me to get out of the house. And Lionel always on Saturday morning he did the shopping, then he popped in at Bolsey Road. And I wasn't allowed to come along. Because me and Zach would just talk about a magical subject and 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 go right over the heads. And they didn't like that because there is them with all the fancy educations and dressing up pretty, you know, and there is me a piece of scum out of a borstel and I hit it off operating on an intellectual level they could only dream about. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it then, but I now know why. They perceived me as a threat. Mm. And not a threat in the sense I'm gonna f kick your f in either. Uh -huh. Another type of threat, mm -hmm. you know? When did you start reading the runes? For other people? I mean, I, 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 in Camden, uh, I, I, uh, I started doing it in Camden Psychic Center in 86. What was it like? I mean, did you, did you just learn it intuitive? Did you, did you like it? You just did. I, no, there was a bit of a community at astrologers, tarot readers, in some kind of uh, big place where everybody had their own little stall. And mm -hmm. I just got, I did for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. I did readings there. But I didn't got a lot of readings. Because although I'm very good with the runes, I haven't got the social skills to sell. Okay. I couldn't push myself. Mm -hmm. People had to come to me about the reading. I could, I, I don't know. I, I haven't, I, I have no social graces. I have no social skills. That's, that's the way how I grew up. Mm -hmm. So people come to you. So that's how you started reading. What yeah. do you, what do you like best about reading the runes for people? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I don't like, you know, really interesting stuff. Okay. Not this kind of, is my boyfriend gonna come back to me and all that kind of Monday fish. Yeah, all right. You know, but, you know, I have, when I was in Hollywood, I was doing readings and the wife of the producer had a reading and I diagnosed then and there that she had a tumor in her breast. And she went to the doctor and it, it was cured. Yeah. But that is the kind of real stuff that you go f Because, it, you know, the, the Bacana room was in the 11th house. I mean, that could mean a hundred things. Because I used an astrological outlay for that. But I knew. I just knew that she was in pain and she thought it was a lungs. And I said, it isn't your, it isn't your lungs, love. What, what did your mother, you know, yeah. Said, right, cut the cameras. So they cut the cameras and I took her aside and I gave her healing and I told her basically to score and get your ass off to a doctor. And this happened, you know, stuff like that. Really you like, dramatic you like, you like intervention. Real intervention yeah. in people's lives. Do you still read for people? 
I'll wait, wait when they I'll, come to you. I mean, you're I'll not you're not a self promoter, which I which is no. a quality. I, I you know. I that, can't. That I have. I cannot do. I wish I could. I would make a lot more money, but I don't know how. Mm. But I do readings on the internet now. Mm. You know, I, like? I, I so use Sky. Right. I use Sky, but also people they. I do the reading, I take the photograph, and then I put the photograph of the reading on my altar, and it takes me three days. I look at it, meditate, have a, have a wee spliff, and then I make a note, and then someone else comes through, and then, you know, and, and then it, it builds up into okay. a profile. And then I email it to them, and I have not had one single complaint ever. I mean, if they do, they can have that. The money goes back. Because I will not have my own town as to come. But I don't do a lot. I'll be lucky to get about two months. I make about $60 a month. <laughs> But it's, it's a it's a thing you do. It's it's a thing I got to do. keep my I got to keep keep doing it. Otherwise, you know what they say: use it or lose it. Mm -hmm. and that's true for everything. Mm -hmm. And of course, locally, um, I I go around when they they have this. In Sp Spain is not an animal friendly country, so the the Brits spend most of their time saving animals, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got these meetings where people uh, <laughs> like. Crafts, but it's called scrafts, you know, where you show off your dog and stuff, cats. Yeah. And you pay to get, yeah, it's <laughs> basically it's raising money for animal welfare. And then I go down and do room readings for three euros with a jar for the animal okay. welfare, and that's where the money goes. Okay. So that's the only kind of readings I've done, hmm. you know, just to raise money for animals. Do you? Could you always read as well as you can? I mean, do you think it's a lot more to do with the knowledge or the connection oh, or no, the combination no, or, the, or it, coming through? Or it's, it uh, no, because it work for you? it's not just that that room in that position means that. It's oh, it's like the room, there is an, a signature, a, a ground tone, if you like, of the meaning of that room in that space, in that context of the question. But then it turns into a stream of information which event what via a different lots of associations no longer pertains directly to the literal meaning of the drone. So it opens up clairvoyant perception in that sense. I don't know. No, no, it's, 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 each person has their own thing and, and I'm, you know, thank, um, you, thank you for sharing I'm, yours, you know. <laughs> Ready for some questions on the floor? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, Come on, throw it out. Okay, we're gonna do this in my in my in my sort of semi-controlling way, just so we have orders. So everybody gets in. Could we have hands, please? We'll do them sort of one by one. So who wants to? Who's got a question? Hi there. Hello. Apologies for baby noises. Um, oh, bless. Bless. Um, I'd be quite interested to know. Um, about how you perceive Loki, because some people see him as the darker side of Odin, or uh, some people say, you know, he's uh, he does things that Odin um, can't do because of social constraints. Of stuff. course. So, w what is your relationship with Loki? He's Odin's solicitor. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Loki is an integral part of the Pantheon. I mean, especially in America, and to a lesser extent in England, you've got still this dualistic uh, <coughs> perception of good gods, bad gods, you know, like Christian gods and the devil. And that gets projected onto um, every other system people start working with. But at the end of the day, I give you an exercise. Take the Norse myth, right? Just download, for free of charge, copies of the Eddas. Remove Loki. Take a black pen, move him out, because he is evil. And look what you're left with. <laughs> you know, he is an integral part of the system. Yes, he is a trickster, but so is Odin. I mean, they both are, if you look at it from the perspective of the seven powers or the seven rays, they both fall on the Mercury. Okay, However, I was married to Lionel and he, his craft name was Loki. 
So, yeah. Um, which is a follow-on question while you all are thinking of yours and getting over being shy. So you can have that. That the only way to deal with dark is to confront it because it's only the absence of light. It is not necessary evil in uh, mundane moralistic terms because it's a lot of conventional convenience crap anyway. <laughs> yes. <coughs> You mentioned in the book, and you see the book, many in the book about the racial element. Yeah. Um, I tend to disagree in regards to connection with the, with the runes and the gods, Nordic gods, mainly because I think maybe, what, why do you mention about racial? There's, there's a level of... Um, I have never made any racial no, statements no, about no, the racial, in the book. Not racial, but in regards to... The know, racial folk song. Thank you, yes. Yeah, well, I'm talking... Look, I'm, I'm approaching that from a Jungian perspective. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's nothing to do with the color of one's skin or... That's fine. One of the most advanced students I have is half Chinese. <coughs> His name is Vincent. He's written at least two books on the rooms. Because it's not made clear in the work, in that particular work. That's what I'm saying. No, because at that time, I didn't have the knowledge I have now. The book is dated. Yes. As mm -hmm. books are. Mm -hmm. Where is the key? The key, key book as well. Yes, is, but which, still. Which I've learned from. You, that, you that's, know, that's, but I wrote in 1986, mm -hmm. of course. I have changed my views. That is the whole object of the of any occult discipline. There is stuff in that book that I wouldn't write today. But I've never denied any person membership of any of the groups I've been involved in because of race. Monotheistic religions, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Budon. Yeah. Alright. There is a connection between Budon and the Nordic tradition. That is something I've only read a hit upon very recently, mm -hmm. this year. Right. So that is a subject I'm still exploring and investigating. But yes, I do <coughs> find that the numerology and the God forms worked with are correspond. You know, the Norse gods correspond with the voodoo gods far better than the Greek. Yes. You know, and it is the energies. And it's also, I'm also um, investigating and exploring the probability that they both may share an even older source. Becky, I was wondering if you say a bit about your relationship with Freya. Um, well, to my eternal shame, there isn't one. <laughs> I have never been able to relate to goddesses, probably because my mother was a bitch and she could get away with it. I've never been a goddess. You, know? you changed but you changed your name. Or, or you have no, name. I was given that name okay. in the craft. Okay. And then I put Aswin, Ansu Swanyo, I strung them two rooms together. Okay. to have a surname, so I could write a book. But the name Freya was given by a craft person, Bill Elliott. I don't know whether you still know him. He was a sword maker in the 80s. He lived in Kent. He was making craft swords. And he asked me, um, this was in 1981, mm -hmm. or even 1980, at an Aquarian festival, I went also one of the... And he asked me, where do you come from? And I said, Holland. Well, West Friesland. He said, Freiersland. And I said to Lionel, that's it. That's my craft name. And, and what, how did, what about the roots for your surname? As how, how did they get chosen? Yeah. Oh, that was done as a, by process of analysis. Ansus being Odin, Bunyo being, you know, Bunyo. So, Aswin. Okay. Oh, Dean's joy, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, I know, it's sentimental crap, but no, well, I was only 30. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Great. Question from David. Um, <clears throat> what I found really interesting was when you were talking about um, Libra Astarte. The what? Libra Astarte. Yes. You did Libra Astarte yeah. with Odin. Yeah. And you said rather than shutting it down and destroying it at the end, 
you got married. Well, yes. My experience of Libra Starte with one of the deities I worked with was the same thing. I never expected that to happen, but I instead of shutting it down, I continued the devotion. Yeah. And then the marriage became inevitable. Yes. Is that what you found? Yes. So it wasn't so much you sought the marriage that... I thought I did, but then all the ladies said to look well though, but you don't need to what your idea was it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I was really embarrassed. I mean, how would I dare to presume, you know? Mm -hmm. I was this kind of, I am not worthy, I am not worthy, mm -hmm. like a lot of people of my generation grew up mm -hmm. with. We all know where comes from, comes out of that cancerous womb in the Middle East and all this shit of religious people. <laughs> it is just psychological conditioning and shit being shoved down the line, but hit me the right, you know? <laughs> Katie, question from Katie. I'm interested with what you're saying about losing your connection to Odin. Yeah. And um, I found... That was but through intervention through of malicious magic. Oh, okay. Um, my experience has been very much when I work with one Norse deity very strongly, I mean, I tend to work more with Freya and Frigga, mm. but it, it seems to be that they don't work in, at the same time. There seems to be that I'll have a good couple of years with one and then I'll switch and have a, a couple of years with the other. And that makes eminent sense because as a woman you go through different life cycles as well. I mean Freya, Freya, Holda and any, the only goddess I have a tenuous connection with is the elder form of the goddess Holda. And of course the Norns. They are the ultimate power. They are the ones that write the, the laws for Aesir and men. And in that respect, Odin is the archetypal antinomian who says, I won't have it. <laughs> and his whole objective, submitting himself to all these ordeals on the tree and the eye and traveling down to the, the origins because, you know, some people say he hangs upside down on the tree because of the tower hangman, but that's a lot of the tree is upside down. Right? And he goes back to the pre-evil origins to grasp the runes. And I'm not referring to the to the first type runes. They are only the 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 physical imprint of cos 24 cosmic streams of energy, uh, principles of the of the universe, right? And he uses that to postpone Ragnarok. And in this, he is obviously the antinomian. He is looking for immortality rather than submitting to the degree of the norms. Odin and the norms aren't always on the best of terms, I presume. <laughs> yes? If the tree is upside down, uh, when they uh, describe the location of the various worlds in the cosmologies, does this mean that we should take it that Asgard is actually down? Or that Rasgar is in the roots of the tree or above the I haven't worked at Panag yet. This is just an, intui an intuition <coughs> flash which I got, but I haven't, m that haven't done the intellectual uh, analysis to back it up. So this again is something that is still shimmering away on the hard drive in the subconscious. Sooner or later I will define it more clearly. Ross. Right. Um, you said you were not a goddess woman. No, no. I was wondering what kind of relationship you have with the Valkyries and if you work with your own Dizir in any way. No, absolutely not. No, I work with Odin. Dizir, you mean of my family line? Yeah, or no. more things that have Well, I up. know it has been said by one trans medium in the States, one in Ireland and one in Florida, that I am a direct descent genetically of the Volsungs. So I will work, I try to hook in with the Volsung line, but my immediate ancestors, what, they scum, you know? And I, I, they're dead now, they can hear me speak, and I don't let that 
that bitch is probably cleaning out the toilets in Valhalla after the Vikings are finished spewing, you know? <laughs> but you've never had a connection with maybe the deity in a form that was not... <laughs> maybe, but I have not been able to link into that, and that is part of my own personal psychology and the life I was subjected to as a child. Severe abuse, and then the care system, till the age of 19. You know, so ancestors, I think it, I choose my ancestors. Thy Fortune is an ancestor, Elster Crowley is an ancestor. <laughs> you know, yeah. these are the people I honor, and probably others I can't remember at the moment. <laughs>